Pushed outside, Harper Murray. Not down, Orgel handling. Sarah Franklin, her first swing goes off the touch. Merritt Beeson with the tip. Good coverage on the backside by Redke. And Sarah Franklin on her second swing off the touch and gets the kill. Sarah Franklin is the player to watch in this matchup. The reigning ABCA National Player of the Year. And her numbers are better this season. She has elevated her game from already good to insanely great. Prior to Wisconsin match, she had a stretch of five matches in which she had 62 kills and hit 457. In conference. Great run there, Rebecca Alec. And Alec evens it up. The matchup in the middle is the matchup to watch in this match tonight. It is so important for both sides to establish their middles early on and then continue to go through them throughout the match. Also, some of the best blockers that we see in the conference in the middle for both teams. Lexi Rodriguez off the tape. Great diving up, kept up by Damro. And then the block on the left side for the Huskers. During the first matchup between these two teams just a few weeks ago, Sarah Franklin got a little bit too tentative on swings, and those are when the blocks happen. Franklin has to continue to stay aggressive and swing high, even though it's a SWB big block. SWB audio capture, not registered. Good pass that time by Damro. Tip in the middle, not down. Smart had a swing from the middle there, then rolls to the right side. Furbringer rings a bit. The pass is blocking Andy Jackson. Andy Jackson all over that one. Just a sophomore, but one of the best in the country already so far this season. She has done an incredible job in these one-on-ones. Not moving until she knows where it's going. Get a little stare down after. We love to see it. <laughs> Franklin again. Another block. That time, Beeson with the solo. What a read for Merritt Beeson. Andy Jackson stayed with the middle for Wisconsin because the Badgers established that early on. Furbringer went right over it. The right set to do in a one-on-one. -on -one. Beeson just made a better read. Furbringer runs the middle. Spinning up by Mauk to keep it alive. Free ball opportunity here for the Badgers. They'll go to... with another kill. There's Nebraska coach John Cook. Reigning Big Ten Conference Coach of the Year. Huskers right now on a 5-0 run. Tough serve. Franklin got a good swing on it. Back to Beeson. And Beeson again, 6-0 Nebraska run. And Kelly Sheffield is going to take a timeout. Things have been so good, and the matchups are always high stakes. Goldbringer pushes out. It was behind Franklin, who could not get on top of it. And sends it wide, 7-0 run. Just a missed opportunity for Wisconsin. Sage Damrell finally nailing that pass as she has been struggling so far during this first set, but she finally gets it. Franklin hits it out of bounds. That ball has to be in. Furbringer, first time playing here at Devaney, as well as Damrell. There's the slide of the kill by Anna Smrek. Anna Smrek running a slide tonight. That was something yeah. new that Kelly Sheffield said he wanted to get out of his pocket to try to just confuse Nebraska's defense just a little bit and really well executed by the right side attacker. Smrek can take over a match. She's yeah. remarkably hitting 328 in league play. Down the line. Good save by Franklin. It'll be a free ball opportunity here for the Huskers. They'll run the middle. And Andy Jackson will put it away. The connection between Burke and Riley and Andy Jackson has developed into one of the best in the country this season. They have put so much time and effort into it, and during a match, it is almost always lights out. Jackson leading the nation in hit percentage. Tough serve by Beeson. Was inside the antenna. The end of the block. Back row, Beeson with the tip, found the floor. 
really smart decision. That's why Beeson is one of the best, because of her high volleyball IQ. She knows which blocker is coming in. When she has the outside coming in to help, that opens up a massive hole right behind the block where there's no player in sight. Beeson had a terrific match last time against the Badgers in Madison. SWB audio captured, not registered. For the Badgers, right now, Beeson three for five, hitting 600. Another kill for Smack. Wisconsin's doing a better job so far in this matchup, swinging high. There were a lot of errors during the first time these two teams met. Nebraska blocked them off the court. They had six blocks in the first set alone. That forced a just error string for Wisconsin for the rest of it. The Badgers are doing better, swinging high. Served along by Sage Damro. Damro, the red shirt freshman in the lineup. And we mentioned off the top of Blue Jay Guchkin and Lola Schumacher still unavailable for the Badgers. It is so difficult as essentially the third string libero to come in in these massive matchups. She was against UCLA, against rival Minnesota, and now against rival Nebraska. It's a tough spot to be in. Rojal pushes it off, then over to Smart, not down. No touch. Swing is long by Taylor Landefair. Oftentimes you'll see opponents hit long when you have Anna Smrek up there in front because the outside knows that they have to swing a little bit higher. Sometimes that goes out of bounds. Carly Anderson in to serve. Transfer from Montana, graduate student. Good up, diving up there by Damro. Into the blocking off and a kill for Sarah Franklin. Huge swing from Franklin out of the backcourt this time. Charlie Furbringer loves to get Franklin going back there, especially in two hitter rotations where normally the only bailout is an outside, but Wisconsin puts in Franklin as a third attacking option. We saw the triple block up on Franklin out of the back row again. We saw that in the first matchup between these two. Nebraska does not triple a lot, but they're willing to do it on Franklin and a big block on the left side. CeCe is there along with Orgel. Julia Orgel is so good at reading that slide attack and setting it up well, mirroring the slide, meaning she's making the same movements that slide attacker is making, getting inside SWB of SWB audio capture, not registered. 3-0 well. run here for the Badgers. Off the net, rolled. Driving up by Damro. Ran the middle. Chilboy with the up. And that is in, and it is a 4 0 run on the kill by Yulia Orgel. What an impressive up. Lanny Chilboy diving after that one to keep it alive, but really good net play on Wisconsin side gets that one done. Just good heads up plays. 50 50 balls meaning the right at the top of the tape. Wisconsin's taking control there. Huskers go on their 7 0 run. The Badgers on a bit of a run here to get right back in it in set one. Back row, Harper Murray, nobody up, and Harper with the kill. There's always a few times in a match where Harper has these monster swings, and you can tell she's just putting her entire body into this. Check out how hard she's hitting this ball. It's like a freight train coming through. <laughs> Harper Murray hitting 295 in her last nine matches, and maybe more impressive than that, Emily. She's had no more than three hitting errors in any of those nine matches. It's exactly what you want to see from your star attacker. You want them to get better as the season's going on. You don't want them to die out once tournament time comes around. Harper Murray is a player that is ready for December. Checking the rotation on the Badger side. Bailey Chan is in for Wisconsin. Freshman out of Portland, Oregon in the back row. I think that's what they're... Yeah, they were checking rotation. There's Coach Sheffield, 12th season for the Badgers. SWB audio capture, not registered. In the block. <laughs> the tip and the kill, Rebecca Allen. 
Nebraska's defense just frustrates the heck out of you. It is so <laughs> difficult to put a ball down against them because they are so scrappy. They get to everything. Those backcourt defenders just fly around. You think the ball is down, all of a sudden someone gets an arm on it. Off the slide, Dev Robinson off the block touch. Back row, Harper Murray, thumb down and wide, point of Wisconsin. Murray going for the right shot there to get in on that sideline, just going a little bit too strong with that right thumb down cut. Orgel now will serve. right into the block of Sarah Franklin. Wisconsin's reading that slide attack so well. First it was Orgel up front, now Sarah Franklin identifying the side really early on off of a good pass, especially in these two hitter rows, just getting those hands right inside of it. Second service error on the Badgers. So Bergen Riley will serve. Good tip by Franklin. And a point for Wisconsin. Took a little off it right off the hands. Yeah, really smart decision from Franklin. She's known for her power and for her craft. SWB really audio shot. capture not registered. Makes her such a good player. She knows exactly where the defense is set up and can put the ball right where they are. Here got the touch and the kill. I don't know if serving Lexi Rodriguez in this position is the smartest thing to do. Rodriguez is the best passer in the nation. She is not a player that you want to test out. Even if she is in right back in zone one, it sometimes is more difficult for the setter to play it, but with how well Rodriguez leads Bergen, it's not worth it. Forberger pushes out to Franklin again. Oh, Sarah just finds ways to terminate so many different shots. Franklin knows exactly where the holes are, and that precision is insane. You could put a dime out on the court, and Franklin would nail it. In this position, one of her bread and butter shots right to the back corner, splitting the left back and middle back defender perfectly. At one point, Franklin was hitting negative 300 here in set one. She's now had four consecutive kills without an error. She's up to positive now. As they run, Rebecca Alec in the front row, and Alec with another kill. Rebecca Alec has really turned up her play as the season's gone on. It's been so impressive to watch her get that connection down with Bergen Riley just a little bit better than what we saw in the beginning during non-conference play. Good, quick run, what a kill by Booth. Wow, was that powerful. Booth trying to put a hole in the floor, come on now. This is not a play that you want to be on the other side of. So much power coming out. Listen to this. <laughs> Come on. It's almost unfair. Three ball over. Good hustle defensively there by the Badgers. Then Beeson off the top of the block there. Beeson. Four kills on six swings. No SWB errors. audio capture. Not this registered. Is so balanced and dynamic. They don't have one star attacker. They thrive off of that balance, getting everyone involved. And off a good pass or even medium pass 10 feet off the net, you never know where Bergen Riley's going. Run the middle again and again. Booth with the kill. Both Wisconsin and Nebraska doing a really nice job getting their middles involved. That was going to be the number one key coming in for both sides. Can they establish their middle early on, but also can those middles stop the other sides? There's a number for you. The last time Nebraska and Wisconsin played, the Badgers only set the middles 8% of their total swings. They combined four kills and hit zero as well. So not very good numbers. That has to be better. A lot of that, though, Larry, comes from the past. Wisconsin didn't pass it well enough to get them out of the ball. Bergen Riley. 
Riley's offensive game has really come alive throughout this season. She knows exactly what situations to dump in. If this ball is tight, she makes sure to establish herself as a threat early on. Even if she doesn't get the kill here, it establishes herself so that holds a blocker on the next good pass. Swiped off the block and down. That's a point for Wisconsin. When Smrek is up front right there, number 14 in red, Bergen Riley has to make sure to keep her outside attacker off. Then if that ball is tight, Smrek is going to go up and roof it every time. Anderson with the serve. Out of system goes Nebraska. Rodriguez steps in last second. Overpass. Put down once again. SWB audio capture not registered. As Libero needs to take charge, keep that ball off the net. Those are the easy plays that Wisconsin has to transition. You can't make those mistakes when you're playing the number two team in the country. Already two kills for Andy Jackson as she heads to the bench. Devin Robinson not down. Found the seam between the block, but couldn't terminate. Overpass again. And Nebraska has been the beneficiary of several overpasses here in set number. Executive sellouts for this team. It has been so impressive and is one of the toughest tickets to get in volleyball. Orjol tries to go deep corner, not there. Overpass. And the joust won by Orjol. Orzhal with the kill. Good response from Wisconsin right out of the timeout. This is go time for them. They have to play as clean as possible, and they have to find a way to keep pressure on Nebraska. That starts in the service line. Orzhal's got to hit a good one. spreading this offense out, really getting that back row attack going. This is something Nebraska's been working on really hard over the last few weeks, establishing Murray back there. And if Beeson does get back there, getting her as well. Sarah Franklin, Nebraska got the block touch. Beeson. SWB audio capture, not registered. Cycled by Lanfair, Lanfair got the touch. Nope, they will say no touch, and now we're going to the challenge card. John Cook grabbed it right away. Three different assistants on Nebraska's side <laughs> stood up and thought there was a touch, along with everyone out on the court, so it seemed... Original decision, Nebraska hit the ball out. Nebraska's challenging block touch. Who was one of those, who was one of those assistants that was jumping up and down? Was it Jalen Reyes, maybe? The, the one that's always jumping up and down? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to love his energy. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That might have just been tape. Yeah, based on that look, the toughest touches to tell are the ones that go off of the arm because you don't yeah. see a finger, finger bent back. It's tough to tell whether that hits Furbringer's arm pad. Based on that look, Based on that look, it doesn't look like it's touching for a bringer. The one before is a little bit more tough to tell. From the looks that we see, I don't know if there's enough to overturn or confirm That's this. That's the key right there, right? And I always remind folks at home, they're watching on their 84-inch HD TVs, <laughs> and we're, we've got a 13-inch monitor, so maybe you're seeing something we don't. Also a reminder that the ref down there has looks that we don't as well. So sometimes they have clearer shots or things that we don't see. But based on the ones that we do see, not sure we have enough evidence to confirm or reverse the call. Again, you have to have 100% conclusive evidence either way. I think our officiating crews this year have done a much better job of looking at the TV review first. Yeah. Take a look at that. And then if it's inconclusive there, they'll go to the internal in-house set of cameras 
SWB audio capture not registered. And probably on our third version of that. I think we do finally now have a decision. The call stands. No touch. Wisconsin point. Nebraska loses their challenge. So John Cook will lose his challenge. It will be point Badgers and 2016. Call stands, meaning there's not enough evidence either way to confirm or reverse that call. So Nebraska now down to just one challenge for the remainder of this match. Unless we go to a fifth set where you get an additional one. So Nebraska at 20 to 16 now in the red zone. And that was really the biggest difference between previous Wisconsin-Nebraska matches and the last Nebraska sweep in Madison was Nebraska, once they got to 20 in that 3-0 sweep, they finished, and a big block there on Beeson on the left side, and now the Badgers slowly creeping back into this, and you see, since 2021, 21 of the total 30 sets they have played have been decided by four or fewer, and most most times, it's been Wisconsin who's finished. And a lot of them have just been decided by two points. And talking to Kelly Sheffield and John Cook, they stress the importance of just being two points better the, than the opponent, because a lot of times that's the difference between winning or losing a set, a match, and resulting in a Big Ten title, because when these two teams meet, there is always a title on the line. So one or two points could be that difference maker. CeCe Crawford to serve. Oh, tough serve brought back in by Landfair. Beeson into the block, and that block really showing up now for the Badgers there within two. The Badger block has been impressive all season long, and Carter Booth having herself a night. Blocking so well up front, taking charge, getting really good touches as well. Just a really nice read getting those hands over. Nebraska has to play a little more aggressive than that. Swing harder. The tip, and Rebecca Alec has been effective in the middle. She has five kills here in set one. Normally, Rebecca Alec is kind of the last offensive option for this Nebraska team because they have great hitters all around. That's what makes her so great, though, is she's kind of sneaky good. You give her the ball, and she's very terminal. Olivia Mauk with the serve. And tough pass. Pulls Furbringer well off into the set to Franklin. Great angle there by Franklin, but not down. Merritt Beeson is dug. Back to Franklin again, off the block of Beeson. Franklin, and one more time, off the top of the ball. SWB audio capture, not registered. Guess who? Not down. Here's Beeson. Set out. Bumper with the angle, not down. Bump set by Orjal to Franklin, who rolls it over. Longest rally of set one. Franklin again with the roll. Got it, Sarah Franklin with the shot. Long breaths after that one. Everyone just trying to catch their breath. It is so difficult to stay in those rallies, especially as an outside attacker, because as rallies extend normally, the outsides are getting more and more swings. Kudos to Sarah Franklin for staying in that and staying aggressive. The applause, the appreciative applause from this Nebraska crowd. Alec in the middle. Kill. Off of the hands of Booth, into the net and down. Rebecca Alec right now, six for seven, having herself an incredible night. Nebraska's been establishing the middle since point one of this match, and it's paid off. Be impressive, though, the way the Badgers have battled back from being down 7-1, and Nebraska's first service error comes at an inopportune time. In the red zone from point 20 on, you have to play as clean as possible because a game to five goes very fast if you're making errors. What a push there. Great up by Furbringer, but what a shot by Beeson. Near corner to make Furbringer come get it. Such a smart play. 
SWB audio capture not registered. Do was get the ball over, and even if Furburner plays this ball up, at least you take the setter out of the play, and it's an out of system play anyway. So smart. Nebraska now two away from set one. Off the fingertips and Smrek with the kill. A bit of a chaotic point that time. Both sides out of system, kind of just chucking up the ball and hoping for the best. But it helps when you got a six-nine player on your team that is very athletic as well to make those kind of plays. Looks like a pinball out there yeah. for a while. Ouch! You just do not like to see those in those moments. Here we are, set point in the first. Orjal, Nebraska with the block touch. Lanfin. Set one goes to Nebraska. Big Ten Coach of the Year. Katie Schumacher, Collie. I think what she's done, despite everything, her diagnosis, yes. coming off strong, showing up every day for those athletes. And not only that, but Penn State's having a heck of a run. This is their best season since 2017. The only case John Cook has is that he told everybody at Media Days up in Chicago, you'll remember this when he was in front of the podium, he said, SWB audio capture, not registered. <laughs> I think he was setting himself up. I think he, he's talked about before how sometimes it's harder to win a Big Ten title than it is to win a national title because you have to play 20 hard games back to back to back for the entire conference season. There are no days off in the Big Ten. This conference is so difficult. And there are the standings in the conference. Wisconsin, this is a must win match for them. If they want a shot at the Big Ten title, if they lose tonight, they are out of contention. Good swing outside the block by Smrek, and Smrek with the kill. During the first matchup a few weeks ago, Nebraska defended Smrek incredibly well. It was her worst attacking night of the entire season. They found a way to shut her down. They've got her more involved tonight, doing a much better job. See those numbers, negative 074 tonight, hitting 400. There are the numbers for Anna. Good put down. CC Crawford. Wisconsin's net play has been a big positive so far this match. They are taking control of these 50-50 balls right in the top of the tape. This is a physical team in Wisconsin, one of the most physical teams in the country. You don't want to put up tight passes against them because they got the height and the athleticism to knock it down. And the middle. And Point Nebraska. Andy Jackson got the touch. It's so difficult to get a kill off a quick attack when you have help on that and two blockers up. That tells you just how dynamic Andy Jackson is as an attacker to get that. The ringer pushes behind. Good up by Dammer. And then the kill. Nope, they're gonna say SWB audio capture not registered. Wisconsin won the toss, elected to kick. Opening kick is handled by Ja'Cory Bonnie. Bonnie breaks to the outside. Down the sideline he goes. And out of bounds, great field position for the Cornhuskers on their opening drive. Yeah, what a start to this game. This crowd, one of the most loyal Jackson fan bases in college football. Number two. She has four kills. They stand behind their the team. They just need some reason to cheer and get on their feet. And how about Barney starting off the game with an explosive return? 45 yards on the return. The cornerback, freshman Dylan Riola. Up and down season. Four kills, five swings, himself hitting going 600. With the offensive coordinator. Man, this was a headline grabber when Jackson. Matt Rule was able to secure Riola as a commit payment early. Jackson leads the nation in hitting percentage as of Friday. It's been so impressive to watch Andy Jackson game just completely skyrocket in the work that she put in in the offseason. She had three inches to her vertical. She now touches 10-10. It's, it's insane. Plus 
10-10 frequently at home on my ladder. <laughs> to beating Nebraska is Nebraska. Our FCN HR. Love seeing them out here. Jackson again. <laughs> what a shot. Right on that back line. Damro ducked out of the way thinking it was long. And Andy Jackson with five kills. Jackson's so good behind the setter. It's like her vision just completely opens up when she's on that right side. SWB audio so well. capture not registered. Nebraska's middles right now. Rebecca Alec hitting 714. Andy Jackson hitting 667. Those are insane numbers. For context, anything above 300 is good. That is absolutely insane. It's like a basketball player hitting 50% from the three. It's wild. Smart takes first touch, doesn't matter though. Orgeron bails him out. Not a bad bump set there to keep Wisconsin in this in set number one. Wisconsin needs to do a better job of hitting well out of system. They've been out of system so much tonight because the passing hasn't been great. Those outsides need to do a better job of taking care of it, just like that. Carly Anderson is in now. Anderson out of Ontario, Canada. Way of Montana. Make her way to Madison. There's Barrett Beeson out of the back row. When any of Nebraska's attackers coming out of the back row are one on one, you almost expect them to get a kill because they're so dynamic and have such great court vision. They know exactly how to go around it for the kill almost every time. Miley Chan back in now for Wisconsin. Real change. And Harper Murray to serve. Service long, second service error for Nebraska in the match. Nebraska's serving really good to start. You can tell they're hitting their seams well. Even that one that went out was still right between the two passers. The tip by Landfair. Great. Diving up by Chan. Got that up by Children. Robinson on the slide. SWB audio capture not registered. Then Robinson slipped on that slide and didn't get back into the play, which I believe left Furbringer all by herself. Lena Chilboy, are you kidding me? It's just impressive up after impressive up. She's like Superwoman back there. She is flying all over the court two times in that rally. Gets their setter in a good position. She is so fun to watch. Not only does she fly around the court, but she is so energetic. You see her do laps around the court, and so she actually contains her energy and doesn't injure her other teammates, which I just absolutely love. It's the saying, no regard for her physical well-being. No regard for her physical well-being. <laughs> or her teammates, for that matter. <laughs> That's right. Back row, kill Harper Murray. Nebraska's offense just completely rolling right now. That 9-2 to two scoring run, a lot of that due to balance on their side. Riley is setting a fantastic game. Hey. Kennedy Orr serving. Huskers siding out at 70% to Wisconsin's 52. What a up by Choboy again. Recycled, good job. Back row, rolled in. Good up by Tamara. Back row, Harper Murray. Great up by Milo Chan. And the bump kill for the Badgers. How about that? Not sure that was intended, this ball going over. Some great, more great defense on Nebraska's side. Check out this up from Lanny Choboy again laying out for it. Just a miscommunication on Nebraska's side. Wisconsin sends over a free ball. This is a play that you have to call off early. Someone's got to take that. Ooh. On the slide. There was no touch. It'll be a point. Badgers is Alec with her second hitting error here in the match. SWB audio capture not registered. Franklin off the block. 
touch. Overpass, right down, and another kill by Rebecca Alex. She has seven. Rebecca Alec just taking control of the front court, doing a nice job identifying those overpasses, especially, and really taking control with her hands. And I like the decision to go up and use that swipe method rather than go up and try to attack this ball. Gives you a little bit more control. Berberger pushes out right down the line. Great shot by Franklin. She saw the line and took it. Sneaky attack from Sarah Franklin. Barely enough space for her to rip that line, but just gets the window to do it. Slices it in. Not halfway through set number two, and already Sarah Franklin with 26 swings. But you have a feeling she's going to have to have a big night. Goes off the block and drops right in the campfire. Well, and for context on those 26 attempts, too, that's more than the next two players combined. She's just continuing to get set after set. Wisconsin has relied a little bit too much on her. I'd like to see Furbringer get the ball to her other attackers, especially the middles, when they can. Olivia Mauk serving. Murray into the block of Smrek. That's just a wall to try to get through. You have Carter Booth, 6'7", standing next to Anna Smrek, 6'9". Check out. Wisconsin, and how far Smrek was getting over on block drills was ridiculous. I mean, she's completely, her elbows are basically where the net is, so yeah. it's like she's just putting a, a roof right, right on the net. It's, it's crazy going up against that. I couldn't even imagine. Her armpits were yeah. top of the net high. And all she had to do was just go find the ball on the other side. Yeah. That one was won at the net by Harper Murray. Right up against Spreck. To go up against a 6'9 player, you have to be fearless and make big plays like that in these big moments. When you know you got a big block in front of you, you have to go up as aggressive as possible with the confidence that you can win those matchups. finally falls off of the block. I think that was off of Booth, who will get credit for the block. That reaction time from Rodriguez in the backcourt, that's one of the things that makes a really good libero. You have to have some of the quickest reaction times, especially on some of these plays. Going outside your body, that's why Rodriguez is one of the best to ever do it. Off the tape, Mauk. Passes a dime, but it's blocked on the right side. Spreck again. Spreck's block numbers are beginning to creep up there. That's her third. Yeah, all of Wisconsin doing a much better job controlling the outside attack. Spreck really get involved, getting involved defensively, setting up the block really well, and a lot better than what we saw during set one. SWB audio capture not registered. And it is again. That is nine blocks now for Wisconsin in the match. And four in the second set alone, and we're not even halfway through. Oscars will take a timeout here. Nine blocks, the Badgers on a 3-0 run, 14-12 here in the second. So for Nebraska, let's look at what they did last time and tonight. The middle matchup was the thing to watch coming into this because Wisconsin held Nebraska to just 125 in a total of 10 SWB kills. SWB audio matchup. capture Tonight, not registered. Reversing that Nebraska's middles are going absolutely off. 13 kills hitting over 500. Those are the numbers we're used to seeing from the Huskers. Swing wide, just as we talk about him getting a hurt by Andy Jackson. Sorry about that jinx, Andy. <laughs> Set looked just a little bit too low for her. Long on the serve. That is service error number five in the match on the Badgers. And right when Wisconsin is getting back into it, they miss that serve at a critical time. Those are the plays you just can't happen when you're trying to claw your way back against a number two team.
touch off the swing by Smrek. A little tight to the net on the pass. Smrek again. And that's going to be out and a point for Wisconsin on the Smrek kill. Smart swing from Smrek going at the high hand shot. Because she's 6'9", she touches 11 too, and oftentimes she's going for that rather than swinging straight down into it. Fifteen, fourteen. Burbringer pushes out. Orgel swipes at it. Jackson spins to keep it alive. Here's Harper Murray with the tip. Great up. Diving up there on the save by Anderson. Back row. Nobody home. And Merrick Beeson delivers. Really smart decision from Bergen Riley. All options available on this free ball. It's tight to the net. She could also take it SWB over if she audio captured, not registered. Really holds that blocker for one more second, allowing that back row attack none on one. Goes Orschel. Land fair. What a shot. Over her shoulder, out of system, and paints the line. Doesn't get much better than that. That's why Taylor Landfair has been a player of the year in the Big Ten, because she can make these plays that are so difficult, look so impressive, and almost effortless. On the slide, Robinson into the block, and Nebraska with its fourth block of the match. Well, Wisconsin's had a good pass, their offense. Passing his predecessor, Pete Waite, who's here with us tonight. Pete does the radio broadcast for the Badgers. It's good to see Coach Pete earlier. Turn, and I think Kelly Sheffield's going to challenge that there was a touch. And Nebraska's reaction tells me there just might have been one. Pretty much everyone on Wisconsin's side of the court put up that hand for a touch signal right after. Original decision, Wisconsin hit the ball out. Wisconsin is challenging block touch. This probably will not take long. Let's look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that pinky of Andy Jackson. Yeah, so this will be a quick review. It was Andy who kind of hung her head after they challenged it. <laughs> a lot of times yeah, you, can, you can really tell by the reaction of the That's players right. whether or not they're going to win that challenge. Yeah. Isn't that what you do every time is you immediately turn to see how the other team reacts? Like, no, I didn't touch or oh, they got it. Well, it's <laughs> also tough. Me. Volleyball players are the best liars, Larry, too. A lot of times you touch it and you're like, I'm not me. It wasn't me. Yeah, we know that of you. SWB <laughs> audio capture, not registered. <laughs> Time right we have now. a block touch. Uh, Wisconsin or Nebraska? Oh, excuse me. Wisconsin retains the point and retains their challenge. We got you, Patty. We we know what Patty Rolf meant. It was reversed, and instead of 1914, it'll be 1815. That's a complete change in yes. this matchup. This is huge in the second set. Now down just three rather than five. Massive flip right now. Wisconsin has to capitalize this and bring an aggressive serve in the scene. Orjal back to serve, the former Big Ten freshman of the year. Who is playing just about everywhere. That is wide, no touch there. And Andy Jackson with another hitting error. Because Wisconsin's block has been heating up, that forces Nebraska to change their offense a little bit. You want to swing just a little bit higher. That's caused a few too many errors on Nebraska's side because of the good defense on Wisconsin's. Where's all targets Harper Murray? Slide again right back to her. Yep, you like to see that. That's what we call a repeat set. If your attacker makes that error, give them the ball back. You give them confidence and you get that connection down just a little bit better. Kennedy Orr now will serve for the Huskers. Kennedy in her senior year. 
All the seniors will be honored tonight after the match. Senior night for the Huskers right between the block. Good swing by Deb Robinson. And the precision from Robinson up front. Just a small seam for her to hit through. She finishes her hand right through it. Watch the middle block on Nebraska's side. Just a little bit late getting to this. That's why that seam happens. First kill for Devin Robinson. On six swings. SWB audio capture not registered. Off the tape and the ace. CC Crawford, whose mom, dad, and brother are all here watching tonight. It's a really good serve right at the top of the tape. This is why you aim right there, because if it goes over, a lot of times it's an ace with that little trickle. Another tough pass. Opportunity here. Franklin with the tip. Showboy keeps it up. Wide, and the Badgers have even this at 19 here in set number two. This is critical. Nebraska's whole team is telling John Cook to challenge it, but Cook only has one challenge left, so if he burns this, he'll be out. That shows the trust that he has in his team right there. Oh, so already has challenged once and lost the challenge. So this is decision, John Nebraska Cook's. Hit the ball out. Nebraska's challenging block touch. This is the second challenge. If there is no touch, Nebraska will be out of challenges. Oh, there was a touch. Merely that middle finger of Booth. And to be honest, John Cook is really good at challenges, but I don't know, just with, with the cameras that we have, like, I don't know if it's worth challenging a touch call, to be honest. Obviously, he's going to win this one. Right, right. But that was a really gutsy move from him, and it really does show the trust that he has in his team. How much of it had to do that it could be 20 to 18 or 19 yeah. all? Massive flip. Yep. See it hit the right hand there of Carter Booth. Just the fingertips, I guess left, sorry, left fingertips. A much better swing from Landfair, really just precisely hitting that hand. We've seen reverse, few... SWB audio Nebraska. capture, not yes. registered. And they retain their challenge. To continue, just a few too many errors yep. on Nebraska's side. We saw eight hitting errors in the first set, eight here in set two already. They have to play a little bit cleaner. Twenty eighteen, Nebraska now in the red zone. I think it's worth repeating that in that run that Wisconsin had when they knocked off Nebraska 10 consecutive times, it was Wisconsin that was closing out all of the close sets. You know, they would get to 22 all or 21 20, and it was Wisconsin making the plays down the stretch. Earlier this year in Madison, that was Nebraska. Wisconsin would play them really well up until that 20 point mark and then all of a sudden Nebraska found ways to really turn it on it looked like they dialed it in on the service line hit balls in that they were supposed to write in seams and honestly Wisconsin made too many errors they had some critical serving errors and attacking errors late that really cost them a few of those sets for bringer with the serve just long those are those errors that you yeah. cannot have when you're trying to inch your way back in the other teams in the red zone. You have to play as clean as possible. Olivia Malk now coming in to serve for Nebraska, and this has been the Huskers' best rotation. Last time they played Wisconsin, Nebraska scored 12 points, had a couple of aces, and went on a 4-0 run to end the match with Malk at the service line, and now that was my turn. Good job, Larry. Yeah. Heard a gift on Wisconsin side after that miss serve. Out with the bump set. Smrek swipes it into the block. And Rebecca Alec, her first block of the match. SWP audio captured, not registered. You need to be as aggressive as possible. You don't beat this Nebraska team tipping because even if this ball goes over, it's a decently easy play for that off blocker to make. Smrek has to go up, use that strong arm she's got. Back row, Franklin. 
was a touch by Nebraska, so right back over, then into the block again. Furbringer fires it in. Great connection there. And Booth with the kill. That said just a little bit too low, but Booth finds a way to make it work. Watch her change her arm swing halfway in the air. She's ready to attack this ball, but it's too low, so she just swipes it right on through. Really good split second decision. We may have another challenge here. Patty Rolf clarifying what the challenge is. Challenging a nut net violation. Let's listen to Patty, she'll tell us. <laughs> She's going to go clarify it with Coach. Original decision, no net fault by Wisconsin. Nebraska's challenging net fault. I don't have, have we seen net faults before in this matchup between oh. Nebraska and Wisconsin? Oh, have we seen just, net faults before, I'm Larry? I'm just curious. Yeah, thinking back at that first time that they were here, number one versus two undefeated, the match ended on a net call. So that's something that Wisconsin knows all too well and something they've really been practicing over the last year. From that, it looks like the ball has SWB been SWB audio capture, on, though, not registered. Does touch it. Again, if hair does touch it, oh, Furbringer, that complete foot is under the net. Yeah. Really good decision. It's a good ID from the coaching staff on Nebraska's Play is side. confirmed, no net fault. Point Wisconsin, Nebraska loses their challenge. So Furbringer under the net on that play. Her, sometimes they can say that that isn't um, affecting the play in the game right there. So if the ref believes that it wasn't affecting the play. So Nebraska now out of challenges is the net result of that. And it is 22-21. Tough serve. Overpass put down by Orgel. Oh, net violation on Wisconsin. Wow. What a turn of events, Larry. Those are the plays this late in the set that you cannot make. You have to play as clean as possible. Yes, you want to be aggressive on this, but you need to stay disciplined. Yeah. Borgeau's hand got the net. Furbringer goes behind. And good swing and a kill by Sprint. Right back in it. Really good side out on Wisconsin side. They need to find some momentum, especially having stalled in that challenge and then the net play. They need to find a way to get up the juice on their side. And up front, this is one of Wisconsin's worst hitting rotations. It's a two-hitter roll with Crawford and Orgel. Watch for them to go to Franklin in the backcourt as their best option. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Happened in the first set as well at this point in the set. SWB audio capture, not registered. 22, Harper Murray now. Back to serve for Nebraska to take a 2-0 sets lead. swept Wisconsin in a season was 2012. Mm. So it's been 12 years. And also, coincidentally, the last time that Nebraska volleyball beat Wisconsin and the football team also beat Wisconsin in the same year was 2012. Oh. That just handed to me by our sports information department. So the last time that these two teams met, Nebraska beat Wisconsin at Madison for the first time since 2013. I asked Merritt, were you even playing volleyball then? She said, no, I hadn't even touched a ball by that point, which that gives you context for these players. How about that? Merritt Beeson with the diving save. Mauk kept it alive. 
Opportunity here for Smrek. Not down. Free ball over. Riley goes to Beeson. Outside from behind. Good dig again by Malk. Right into the middle. Touched by Carter Booth. Such impressive defense on Nebraska's side. Wisconsin gets it done, though, with a tip right over the block. But the Littles on Nebraska's side have just been so impressive. They pick up nearly everything. It's been so fun to watch them all season, just flying across the court. SWB audio capture not registered. Jackson. Well, it hasn't been the cleanest match so far, really, on either side. Nebraska up 2-0, but both teams not hitting well. Wisconsin under 200. Nebraska hitting about 218 right now on the match. Ooh, what a block. <laughs> I mean, so well read by Anna Smrek. To come help on that gap set, it's really difficult with this set because it's right between the two blockers. But Smrek is in to help for a reason, and that is why to do <laughs> stuffs. She did stuffs there. <laughs> Off the block goes Beeson and got the kill. Much better swing on Nebraska's side. Going for the high hand shot, tooling it right off for the point. Furbringer pulled off. Good up by Daniel. On the slide, Jackson does not get it by Orzel. And then swiped into the pocket. Shrek, Smrek just shakes her finger. And the Green Wall of Madison is absolutely showing up tonight. They have 11, and we're barely through two sets right now. They are blocking so incredibly well. Nebraska has to do a better job of swinging high, especially when it's that booth smart combination. Just long. Ducking out of the way was Sage Damro at the last second. This is what a good block does. It forces attackers to try to hit shots that they don't want to hit because you want to go around the block. That forces a lot of errors on Nebraska's side, and we've seen them already hitting negative so far in the third. SWB audio Andrews capture not early. registered. Seemed like the recipe was to fall behind early, claw back into it, and lose late. That's no touch point for Nebraska. Huskers right now hitting negative 222 in this set. This is a must win set for Wisconsin right now. If they want to have any shot at a Big Ten title, backs against the wall, down 2-0, they have to rise to the occasion here. The biggest thing they need to do better is controlling these passes and that first contact. Swing and a kill. That's what happens when you knock Wisconsin out of system. You get a really easy ball on your side. Nebraska is so good at transitioning these easy plays. Really tough pass. Just an easy roll shot taken care of. Good point for Lampair. Last. From Sarah Franklin. Three ball opportunity. For a bringer pushes outside. Orgel rubs it off the block. Back down. Great diving up. Murray goes around the block and gets the kill, and it's defense leading to offense. Murray hit a seam that barely existed. You couldn't even see it out there. She manages to take a big swing at this, slicing it inside, nearly taking Furbringer's head off. That was coming with heat. <laughs> Back to even at 5 3 0 Husker run. A little bit of relief on Murray's face, too. Called on Wisconsin. Boy, they had such a great run there in time. Quick hitter to CC. Furbringer trying yep. to keep this ball off. That's what SWB audio so capture, not, to keep this not head registered. Head off so they can do their job. Hey, 
Taylor Landfair goes line. What a swing by Landfair. 5-0. Nebraska run. Nebraska just capitalizing on Wisconsin's errors. Another really tight pass. Furberger can't do anything with it. Results in an easy play on Nebraska's side, and they capitalize. You know, you make a great point that it may look like Furberg is struggling setting, but she's running all over chasing down balls. She's ran a marathon today already. And the block. Andy Jackson along with Taylor Landfair. Just when you thought Wisconsin was coming back in this match, all of a sudden Nebraska starts to shut that door on it. And when you get this crowd involved, it becomes so difficult to stop. That Nebraska momentum is very difficult at home. That's why they've got a 40-match win streak here at Devaney. Chasing it down again. All she had was a bump set out to Franklin, who rolls it over. Then Jackson, no doubter, 7-0 run for the Huskers. Nebraska absolutely rolling right now, keeping everyone involved. Wisconsin's got a few things. That's surprising. Very surprising. And a lot of those have been top five matchups as well. When you go even a bit deeper, there's been seven top five matchups this season. Five of those seven have been sweeps as well. Wow. Wow. well that ends the 7-0 run. SWB audio capture not registered. Just long by Anderson. Wisconsin has to focus when they're back on the line. They need to hit a solid serve. Yes, you have to hit your seam and make it tough, but there's been way too many service errors on Wisconsin side. Eight already, not even through three sets. They need to clean it up. Miley Chan, Devin Robinson back in for the Badgers in to serve for Nebraska. Kennedy Orr. In. No touch and just long. The offense really needs to help out Wisconsin serve receive. If you get a good pass like that, Damro nailed that one. The offense has to do a better job of putting it away and really helping out their backcourt. Nebraska on a nice little run, nine and one after Wisconsin started on a 5-2 run in this set. Good pass again by Sage Damro. by Nebraska. Robinson got the kill that time. Much better connection between Furbringer and Robinson. The first one just a little bit too low. That one at the height that Robinson needed to get on top of it and put it down. Well, don't forget Sage Damro coming off a couple of surgeries. She had a red shirt year last year, was the number two libero in the country when she was recruited out of Wisconsin to Wisconsin. Bringer kept that alive. Here's Franklin with the roll. Off the block, and Franklin with the kill. Say Jamro just been so impressive this season, coming off of two knee surgeries. SWB audio capture, not December. registered. She had a size hole in her bone that they had to fill in the recovery. She wasn't even supposed to be able to play until October. She ended up starting the season for Wisconsin as one of two liberos as they missed that serve. And now being asked to do a really difficult thing for the last three matches, she has been Wisconsin starting libero as Will J. Guchtikin is out and Lola Schumacher are out. They're both day-to-day. -day. Schumacher did not travel with the team. Gul J. Guchtikin is on the sidelines in street clothes. Damro's been asked to do a lot, and she's handling it, but it's difficult. Stepped in. Good pass there. And Devin Robinson with another kill. Wisconsin needs to continue to capitalize when they get a good pass. Really good takes from Damro in the backcourt, nailing the pass. That allows the offense to run. Good job for Robinson to put it down. Three kills now for Robinson. Saved there by Jalen Reyes. He's 
Lexi Rodriguez were diving into the scorer's table. That's the thing about those Nebraska Littles. I mean, they have no regard for their body. They will dive into the scores table, the stands, whatever it takes to keep the ball alive. Tough serve. Leads to the free ball. A misconnection there with Booth off the free ball. You don't like to see that when Nebraska had a system. Meredith Beeson. System plays are really difficult as an outside because you almost always have two blockers up. That means you have to be crafty and see the block well to place your shots. Beeson placed it perfectly. Numbers there for Merritt Beeson tonight. Nine kills, hitting 208. Couple of blocks. SWB audio capture not registered. Furberger with a nice set. Carter Booth with a kill. Connection between Furbringer and Booth has been one of the best that I've seen all season. It's been something that has been really struggling because Furbringer came in just in August. They didn't have much time to work on it, so it's been a work in progress the whole season, finding the right heights for all of our hitters because they're all drastically different in their attack heights. And an ace for Furbringer. Rupert has been a sneaky good server back on the line. She drives this ball in a way that it drops and hits air pockets really well. So you never exactly know where it's going to land. That time just going a little bit to the right of Mount. Second ace of the match for the Badgers. 28th ace of the year for Furbringer. Second on the team. That touched the fingertips of Sarah Franklin and a kill for Beeson. You could see really good from that angle. You could tell that Furbringer just missed her assignment on that. She put it right in the lap of Lexi Rodriguez. You know 10 times out of 10, that's going to be a perfect ball. Nebraska 225 in the match, 185 for the Badgers. Sent back over. And Beeson with, oh, still alive. Nope. They're going to say two hit violation. They say it hit a player twice on the Badgers' side. It must have maybe hit a knee and then a hand, potentially. Now they're saying replay. They're going to replay it. So they got rid of the double contact rule. If you're making one play at the ball, it actually is allowed to touch your knee and your arm as long as you're making one movement. This would have been the case here. So because Booth was making SWB one movement audio that play, captured, it not twice, registered. That's allowed to happen. That is encapsulated in the double contact rule that the NCAA got rid of. So they'll replay that last point. It's a little caveat that I think people don't realize about the double contact rule is it's not just your hands. You could play it with your foot and your face. As long as it's one play toward the ball, that's legal. That's a great point. As long as the ball doesn't go over the net on the other side. If it stays on your side, that's fine. Right on the line of the kill. Nebraska right now reminded that they're completely out of challenges. So yeah. even if they disagree with the call that you can challenge, doesn't matter. They have to roll with the punches inside out. Tough serve by Franklin. And the ace for Sarah Franklin. All of a sudden, Wisconsin has a ton of momentum right now, and they are serving lights out. That's been the difference here in the last five points or so. They're putting a lot more pressure from the service line. And yeah, Nebraska will take a timeout. Badgers on a 6-2 run. I don't think people understand. You know, you look at these programs and they expect that greatness. They expect to make a national semifinal and get a national championship, but it is so difficult to get there. Murray pounds it down the line. Great push by Bergen Riley. Fantastic ball from Riley, pushing this all the way out. That allows Harper Murray to hit all shots on attack, and she capitalized on that, bringing the heat. Merritt Beeson now to serve for the Huskers. Oops, diving up to keep that alive by Damro. And miscommunication in the back row between Franklin and Furbringer leads to the Huskers' point. Still serving back at the line for Nebraska is Merritt Beeson. 
Nebraska has these mechanical blocking hands they use in the offseason to work on the block and hitting through the block. Merritt Beeson broke one of those <laughs> in their spring workout right before their spring. Just pounded it off the mechanical hand and broke it. I mean, it's a hard thing to get mad about. Like, you know, that's how SWB you know, audio talking. capture <laughs> not like, registered. Like, okay, well, you know, that's fine. We're okay with that. We'll keep buying these as long as you guys are bringing that kind of strength. <laughs> Another hitting serving error that goes long. The service error is the now 10th of the match. It's not even that they're making so many of them. They're at the most inopportune times. That was a point that could be set changing and potentially match changing for Wisconsin. Instead of 15-17, it could be 16-16. Wisconsin has to be better on the back line. Tough one there. Furbringer has to chase it down, leaves it for Orgel, who can't get it over the net. And again, that first touch is the issue for the Badgers. Wisconsin's played Nebraska tight up until the end, and then it's been Nebraska who's made that push to get to 25, and Wisconsin has had quick SWB players, but they audio better captured, people, and I think not you registered. And I can attest to that, being around this program so much, you really get to know these players, and it is such an impressive group of players, just inside and out. They are incredible teammates, the ones that even aren't in the course. Someone like Kennedy Orr sticking yeah. through this program yep. and being such a good leader to those younger girls, and a player like Merritt Beeson transferring in and making such a big difference. One of the biggest reasons they were able to make a national championship match last season. And of course, Lexi Rodriguez, I mean, she's going to go down as one yeah. of the best liberos to come through the college game, and not just as Nebraska, but in the country. Yeah, what Kennedy Orr has done in wanting to be part of this team and yeah. and the love that her fellow teammates have. Here's Andy Jackson with a little glare across the net and gets a little warning from our up official. Look, I love it. Let the girls play. It is great. Harper Murray loves it. I think everyone in this gym loves it. I love seeing sass from players. You get hype about something, not hurting anyone. There's a little stare. <laughs> our R1. Had a little wag of the finger as Orschel goes right back at it and says, yeah, me too. Yeah, sometimes you got to contain it, but honestly, like, that, that's what makes rivalry matches in co college, any sport game so fun is because you have these rivalries that teams just get up for, and you want to see those personalities come alive. You don't see finger wagging in football ever. You see a stare down, like, <laughs> that's completely fine. Why not let the girls play? Come on. Anderson to serve into the net. Puts Nebraska in the red zone, and you're right. Those it's it's the timing. It's timing the timing. Is it's so not necessarily the quantity, yeah. which of course is not great on Wisconsin side. Right. It's the timing of these misserves. Every time they're going back, it's at a pivotal point in the match where if they make that, it makes a huge difference of whether they can win that set. You know, let's say this about Wisconsin. Schumacher will be back. Guchtkin will be back. And this is not a team you want in your bracket no. if you're one of the top four oh. seats. No, I mean, SWB audio like we're capture, not registered. Or Texas, who we know is capable of making a run. This is not a team that you want to see at any point in December. Swing is long there. Robinson turning to Sheffield to ask for the touch. He's still got two challenges left, but. Question marks about whether he's going to take it. Seems a little bit too late to ask for the challenge now. Check it on uh, Furbringer on the sideline there. It, but it looked like maybe she got a little bump to the nose. It's a little tough to tell from there. Yeah. Back row. Harper Murray with the kill. Nebraska three away. All of a sudden, Nebraska closing in with that balanced offense, getting everyone involved. It's Murray out of the backcourt this time. And the serve is long for Murray. 
This is where Nebraska has to close this. This is a perfect example of it being a December match. When you're playing a top 10 team, you have to be able to close these sets off as soon as possible and not give the other team a window to do it. SWB audio capture, not registered. get a little bit dumpy when they feel like they want to take the match into their own hands. Perfect opportunity for Riley to go up. Put this over the libero back into the deep corner. Just beautifully placed. Wow, what a dig by Rodriguez. Back over. Rebecca Alec, what a defensive play by Lexi Rodriguez. Match point for the Huskers. One handed up. Here's Beeson. For the first time in a dozen years. Gems and Hello, Gems, Gems, and Ruani put a Maria and Sit the Dunny. Sit the Dunny, my tire. Let better for no. Hey, any meal come lay? Toxic. Yo, here you are. Toxic, toxic, inedible. Nala damage. Hey, what's the kill? It's a yard. Abu other combat of military in the Nawasi. Hey, Hey, hey. Chuck cutting. 